Hi all. Today let's learn about the HTML5 canvas element. Canvas is an HTML element which can be used for drawing graphics using JavaScript. So it can be used for creating simple pictures, drawing graphs or even creating simple animations. So today for learning about the basics of the canvas element, I have created an Angular application in which we will be trying out the various examples. The basic canvas element can be added in the HTML file by adding the canvas tag. So the canvas tag, as you can see, this is the application. The canvas tag does not have any shape. Like if you inspect the element, You can see that the canvas is present in our web page, but we will not be able to see this. So by default, the canvas does not have any border, but it has a width of 300 pixels and height of 150 pixel by default. So in order to see this, we can add styles to the canvas tag. This is just similar to adding style or CSS to any other element. So here, let's add the border. I'm giving the border as one pixel solid. So now you will be able to see the canvas element. So within this canvas element, we will be able to add images or any graphics using the JavaScript. The canvas element has by default two properties which we will be able to set. One is the width and other is the height. So by default the width is 300 and height is 150. So now let's make this canvas a bit more bigger by giving the width as 1500 and height as 700. So once we save, you can see that the canvas is taking up the entire page. In case of older browsers which do not support canvas, we can provide a fallback within the tag itself. So here, in between the opening and closing tag of the canvas, we will be able to give any fallback content. So most of the browsers or almost all the browsers support the canvas but in case of very old browsers which do not support canvas this particular content will be displayed but in the current browsers like the chrome whatever is given within these tags it will be omitted and only the canvas will be rendered so here i have said you can see that there is still no change within our web application so now let's add a variable within our html so I am adding a template variable and I am naming it as canvas. So this variable we will access within our TS file. So I am going to make use of the view child and I am passing the name of the template variable that is canvas. And here I am giving the variable name as my canvas. This will be the property and of type element rough so once we give this within the ng on in it i will try to query or access the canvas so for accessing the canvas or for accessing the view child within the ng on in it itself we need to give the static flag as true so once we do this we will be able to access the my canvas property within our ng on init lifecycle. So in the ng on init, I am going to create a variable called canvas and I am going to assign the native element property of the element rough. So this will be our canvas element. In order to start drawing on the canvas, we need to get the context of the canvas, which basically provides an interface through which we will be able to draw on the canvas. So first we need to get the context. So for getting the context, we need to call the get context method. 
so here I am going to give the type as HTML canvas element we will get the suggestions for our methods so here we can call the get context which will accept a parameter so it's a string it can either be 2d webgl or other properties which are experimental so today we will be looking at 2d which can be used for drawing two dimensional graphics so here we can pass the 2d so these are the other options bitmap renderer webgl and webgl2 so i am giving 2d so first we get the context now using this context we will be able to draw the different shapes within our canvas so once we get the context we can add a check whether the context actually exists let's get started on drawing the different shapes which are available within the canvas context so first let us take a look at the rectangle shape so here i am adding a private method called draw rectangle and i am passing the context so within this initially we have a method called the fill rect it basically accepts four parameters that is the x y and the height and the width so here you can see all these are numbers so now let's go to our application so the fill rect the first parameter is the x so this point basically will be always in reference to our canvas so the x point will be 20 pixels from the starting of the canvas on the x axis and the y point will be relative to the y axis of the canvas after that we give the width of the rectangle so that will be this and finally we have the height so once we give these parameters automatically a rectangle shape will be rendered within our canvas so by default fill rect what it does is it will draw a rectangle and also fill the inside area of the rectangle so similarly we have one another method called clear rect so as the name suggests what it does is it will clear the contents of that particular rectangle so here again the parameters are similar you can give the x y width and height so once we give that you can see that inner content of the outer rectangle got cleared similarly we have one more method called the stroke rect so the stroke rect is similar to the fill rect but the difference is that it will just stroke the lines that is it will not fill the content of the rectangle but it will just draw the rectangle so here you can see once i zoom you can see that our stroke rect is also created within the second rectangle so these are the most commonly used rectangle shape drawing methods available within the context now let's focus on a different shape that is the line so using lines you will be again able to draw any shape like rectangle square triangle all those things so in our example let's draw a triangle so for that i am going to create a private method called draw triangle and again it accepts the context and in order to begin to draw a triangle first we need to start a path so this will be the starting point of drawing any linear shapes so in order to do that we have to call the context dot begin path method so it starts creating a path now the next step is that you need to call the move to method so move to basically it's it is like pointing to a particular position within the canvas so before drawing any line using the path we need to call the move to method so here i am calling the context.move to and we can give the x and y parameters once we do that we have the line to method which basically tells that from the current position you are going to draw a line 
to this position. So since we are planning to draw the triangle, we need three sides. So we draw one more line and finally we call the context dot fill. So this is similar to the fill rect but what it does is it will complete the shape which we created till now and automatically fill its content. So now once we save this you can see that a triangle has been created here and the content within the triangle it is already filled with the black color. So there is another variant of the fill that is stroke which we saw earlier. So let's see that. So once we use the stroke, you can see that actually the shape is not completed. This is because as you see here, we had called only two line two methods. So only we drew the two sides of the triangle. But since we called the fill, it will automatically close the path and then fill the content. But the stroke does not do that. So in case you are making use of the stroke, you need to close the path. So you can call the close path method and once you do that the shape of the triangle is completed. The next shape which we will look into is the arc. So arcs are basically used to draw parts of a circle. So here again I am going to create a method called draw arc and I am going to pass the context to that method. Next, we can again call the begin path method to start drawing the path. Then, instead of the move to and line to, we can call the context.arc method which basically accepts these parameters. That is the, initially we have the x and y coordinates which will be the starting point of our circle or arc. Next we have the radius of the circle. So we need to give a number. So it can be 5 pixel or 10 pixel anything. And then we have the start angle and the end angle. So basically when we draw a circle we need to start from a particular angle and end at a particular angle. So these angles are defined in radian. So in order to convert them into degree, we need to use this particular mathematical formula. So here I have given the starting angle as 0 and the ending angle, let's give it as 90 initially. Then we have an optional parameter called counterclockwise. So by default, the circle or the arc will be drawn in a clockwise direction. So in case you need to make it as counterclockwise, you need to pass this optional parameter. So now let's fill the context and see what happens. So here you can see that the arc has been created and it has been filled. So it starts from this particular position that is 0 and then it draws till the 90 degree which comes here and it is drawing in a clockwise direction. Now let's pass the counterclockwise flag and now you can see that it actually drew the arc in the other direction. So it started from the same position but it, were, it was drawn in the other direction. So let's remove the flag. Now again we have the same thing like we have the stroke which will again create an open curve and in case you need to close it, you have the context.close path. So it will close the arc. The next shape we will be taking a look into is the freeform curve. In order to create the curves, I am going to create a draw curve private method and again I pass the context and within this Again we start the path and once we start the path we need to provide the initial coordinates from which 
we need to start drawing the curve. So we can use the move to method. And then we have a method called quadratic curve to. So there are two types of curves. One is a quadratic curve where we can provide a single control point or the Bezier curve where we can pass two control points. Here the first argument is the control point X and second is the control point Y. Then we have the X and Y coordinates till which we need to draw the curve. So once we have provided that, we can add stroke. So now let's see what is getting drawn. So here you can see that a particular curve has been created and this is the starting point 500 200 which we gave this is the ending point 600 200 and the control point is somewhere in between the here based on that control point the curve will be drawn so similar to this we have the Bezier curve so here you can pass two control points the x and y coordinates of the first control point and the second control point and then we have the end point so once we do that you can see that our Bezier curve is created so these are the two ways in which you can draw freeform curves in a canvas in all the examples which we saw till now we made use of the context object in order to draw the different shapes on the canvas so there is another way in which we can achieve the same that is making use of the path 2d object so this is basically a convenience method in which we will be able to replay all our drawings and hence we can avoid drawing the shapes again and again so let's see how we can do that so first i am going to create a method called draw using path and we will pass the context so first we need to create a path 2d object so initially i plan to draw a rectangle by making use of the path 2d so i named the variable as rectangle then we can call the rect method which is quite similar to what we saw here so we are basically splitting this into two so in case you need to fill a rectangle you need to call the path dot rect and then call fill on the context by passing the object so this is how this particular fill rect has been split into so first you create the rect and then you can fill the rectangle so here you can see that the same effect was achieved here but since we create a path 2d object you can reuse it in a later point of time in your application so in similarly we have the stroke which is similar to the stroke rect which we saw here so similarly we can draw any shape like the circle that is arc or we can draw curves or ellipses anything by making use of the path 2d object so till now we were covering methods which were used to draw graphics on the canvas now let's see two ways in which we can style the graphics on a canvas so the first way is by setting the context dot stroke style to any particular color so this basically changes the color of the strokes which we draw on the canvas so by default it is black so in case we give it as red you can see that all the strokes in the page they have been changed to the color red similarly we can change the color of the fill as well so here i have given the fill style as this particular color next let us see what are the different effects which, which we can apply on a line so here i am drawing a line here it is the same process we begin a path move to that position line to the new ending point and then we stroke a line so this is our line here now the first property we can set is the line width which basically changes the width of our line so here once we save this you can see that the line width has increased to 10 
the next property is the line cap so there are three options which we can use one is the but which is the default so here you can see that the end of the line is a sharp ending we can either change it to round which you can see the end becomes round or we can make it as square so this is quite similar to the original one so let's make it as round now the next property is the set line dash property so by default the lines are having the solid format so now let's make these lines as dashed so for that we can comment the line cap and add the set line dash which basically accepts an array of numbers the first number signifies the width of the solid portion and the second number signifies the width of the transparent portion so in case we increase this to 14 you can see that the solid portion increased so let's make it as 4 4 and one more property we have that is the line dash offset so by default it is 0 in case we provide some value like maybe 10 you can see that the line actually got shifted a bit so the next property for the line in order to demonstrate that we need to increment the line width of this particular rectangle so i am giving the line width as 20 so now you can see the line width has been increased and the next property that is line join it basically applies to any lines which are joined so the rectangle is created by four lines which are joined so there are different options which we can provide so that is bevel meter and round so the default one is meter in case we change it to round you can see that the corners are rounded similarly in case we change it to bevel you can see that the style has changed for the joints so these are the different properties which can be used for styling the lines so next let us see how we can add text to a canvas so for that we have the context dot fill text method where we can provide the text along with the x and y coordinates so once we do that you can see that the text has been rendered here but since it is very small we are not able to clearly read it so we will be able to set the font size along with the font type of the text so we have the context dot font property where we can set the size as 48 pixel and the font type as Arial. So once we set this, you can see that it became bigger in size and also the style changed. Now since we set the fill style here, it got inherited to the text as well. So we can change it to black. So once we set it to black, you can see that the color has changed to black. Now let's see how we can apply a shadow effect on the text. So for this we have four properties. One is the shadow offset X. It basically means how much shift needs to be applied to the shadow on the X axis. Similarly, how much you need to apply on the Y axis so that it, the shadow will be slightly lower than the actual text. And you can decide how much you need to blur the shadow and also the color of the shadow so let's change this one by one so in case i gave the offset x as 14 you can see that the shadow moved a lot towards the right similarly in case we change the offset y it will move down a lot and the blur in case we reduce now you can see that the shadow became really dark. Similarly, we have the color. 
so in case i give the shadow color as red you can see that the shadow now becomes red in color so these are the different properties which we need to set in order to create a shadowing effect on the text so next let us see how we can create gradients and then apply as a style to any of the graphic objects so for creating the gradients there are three types of gradients which we can create one is the linear gradient other is the radial gradient and third is the conic gradient so initially let's explore the linear gradient we can create the linear gradient using create linear gradient method and we pass the x and y starting and x and y ending and we can add color stops where we can provide the color which we need to give from the beginning or the end so 0 is the start and 1 is the end so once we create this gradient we will be able to set it as the fill style for our context so once we do that you can see that fill style for our rectangle it has changed in such a way that it is linearly moving from white to eventually to black across the rectangle shape which is of width 100 pixel next we have the radial gradient where it is quite similar to the create arc so here we give the initial starting point of the first circle that is the inner circle and the radius for that and then again the starting point of the outer circle along with the radius of that so within that circle we will be able to add the different color stops what color we need to give so here i have applied that gradient to this particular context so now you can see that in a clear way the inner circle has a particular color and the outer circle has a particular color and finally we have the conic gradient where we will be able to provide the start angle and the x and y coordinates of the center of the cone so again we can add the color stops at the start and the end so once we have done that we can assign it to the fill style and you can see that the style is getting applied here in the triangle so hope you are able to get a good idea about the basics of canvas and what are the different 2d graphic shapes which we can construct on the canvas see you soon thank you